If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this upcoming episode of Mind Pump, we talk about robots. Yeah. Uh, Justin wants to have sex with them. I do. We, I also talk, we also talk about National Geographic. Uh, some of that, what the photographers have to go through yeah, to take Adam some of those amazing was tripping out on. Yes, it. I was. Adam talks about spiders in high definition, uh, both on television and also in his mind. What did he Whoa. do? <laughs> uh, also, we talk about the evolution of YouTube, the death of network TV and news, and also why it's important to entertain opposing points of view. In other words. You listen to Mind Pump, you should also listen to those other fitness channels that are wrong, just so you know how right we are. Exactly. Then we get into the questions. Uh, we find we talk about our opinion on herbal detoxes. Do they work or are they stupid? Uh, we talk about what we feared most about being a personal trainer when we first started. We also talk about music and how it can actually disconnect your body uh, in the gym. Believe it or not, um, this may actually happen. We also talk about the ways we would lose weight fast. And we also talk about why it's a bad idea to even do that in the first place. And because of that, that's a great time to mention. That's why we put together the way we would do it in our starter pack for this summer. So if you're trying to get in shape this summer, get shredded, we put together a starter pack for everybody, which is our MAPS Anabolic program, right? MAPS Anabolic. Yeah. Uh, we have MAPS Prime with a self-assessment tool. We have a nutritional component with our nutrition guide and fasting guide. And then we included the forum. forum access so that we could monitor you along the way, along with our community. So uh, we know how important it is to get started right, but we also know how important and effective it is to have support, and that's what the forum adds. So we put that all together. If you got them all individually, you'd spend about 50% more than this starter pack is priced at, and you can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug knows it. Snow White? No, mm -hmm. dude. You guys ever watch this? It's a great TV show. Well, give, give Sounds us like every Disney. Give us, give us some like, time here, bro. That's just movie. God damn it! I hate you guys. Here, I'll give you one more hint. Warning! Warning! Oh, that's uh, uh, well, this, uh no, 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 the space one. The, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lost in space. Lost in space. Yeah, Lost in yes. Space. Yeah. God, that was great. Did you guys ever watch that? I did. Yeah. I loved that. I did. I remember. What Warning, Will Robinson. Yeah, other than that robot that was like, stupid. Yeah, it looked like it was a washing machine. Why would you? Just, <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny when you watch beep, boop, boop, beep. you watch sci-fi movies and their interpretation of a robot, what a robot would look like, <laughs> based on the era that that movie was made. Yeah. So like when robots, like, the con like when they first made everything sci -fi looked movies, like like an appliance. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like a refrigerator. Yeah. Now we make robot like we make sci-fi movies with robots. We robot make robot AI. we want to fuck. What? That's what we do. That's not what we do. That's, that's the goal. Everybody wants to make a robot we can bang. That's that's kind of true, isn't it? Just tell me I'm wrong. But we like I watched Alien, the new Alien, and there's the android whatever guy. Yeah. But they always make him a little bit non-human. You know what I'm mm. saying? Yeah, you, you have to. Yeah. We're a little creeped out if it's too human. You notice that? Like if, if it's like it has the expressions and I don't know, it, but it's like still a little bit off. That's true. It's creepy. Well, I think for the movie's sake, you need to know. Do you yeah. think we're it's ever going to get to a point where they're like that though, where you can't even tell a difference? Of course. I, yeah, for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. That'll be, that's, that's the goal. That's yeah. exactly what they're going to do with it. There's too much be money. In it. Uh, what's going to really be trippy is I was watching this. There's a series on Nat, uh, National Geographic called Year Million. Mm -hmm. So it's like, have I'm you seen it? Watching it. Uh -huh. Oh, it's so awesome. So Katrina and I just watched a Nat Geo. Um, God, what did it, this was last night before last. Um, I was just in a mood for this. It's been a while since I've watched like just like a, a, a Netflix series that Netflix series that was just like nature. It's been probably a good couple of years since I'd done that, and uh, totally smoked one, and then <laughs> watched one of these. And let me tell you, nature. I went down the rabbit hole Whoa. for like. <laughs> Four hours. No, so let me let me tell you what was four hours. Yeah, let me tell you what was so fascinating about how I why I got sucked into it was I hadn't watched in a few years and I hadn't seen the evolution of the fucking cameras. Oh, the clarity. Oh, were, yeah, they were insane. They, I mean, to watch they Did had, you see planet Earth. Yeah, yes, it's <sighs> they had they had praying mantis like you could see his teeth. And you could see the way he grabbed and ate. They did this whole on a spider. 
that which you could see the him shooting the the spider shooting the web at right out of a, his butt across fifty yards of river and creating a web. It was I was so fascinated by it yeah. at the detail of the camera and the ability the, the cameras that we have that we could see the tiny hairs on a spider the size of a quarter and watching him shoot out the yeah. the web and for stoners that's like magic oh it was <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so oh, i didn't shit. i one i didn't know how that worked it, and you know that this is like it boggles scientists they can't figure this out that this spider the spider the size of a quarter spits out a a web that shoots 50 yards across a river creates a ginormous like 20 foot web and trap all in the size of this and can reproduce that 20 minutes later like that just doesn't it doesn't make sense. It doesn't yeah. make sense how that something that small can get that much silk spit out. And I didn't realize like so they they show the millions I mean, of years must of evolution. Get constipated. Yeah. yeah. They they sh- they show this clip, right? So this this is how the spider hunts, right? He shoots this web across this river. And he and he then he goes over and he builds this huge web and trap. And so it shows its first attempt. It shoots it across and then it starts cruising over and another spider hijacks his fucking web. And so he goes bolting after, <sighs> bolting after the other spider, and right before the other spider cuts the line, and then the two spiders go swinging back, take that bitch, the op- opposite directions. He reels in all all of his silk back in and phew, shoots it out again, and does to watch that in like high def, and the, it was just <laughs> yeah. insane to you know, me. You know, I'm in, dude. I'm you know in. what blows me in even more than that is the guy recording this all. Yeah, like the patients, like that's, I'm uh, gonna go find a fucking like, spider. That's how did they ca- how did they catch capture like some of these moments? It must have took some how of it. They have to like have the mount right, and then it, they they monitor it like remotely. Well, there's I I was reading about this one National Geographic uh, photographer who was trying to capture like this bird, like being born or whatever, and it took him like three months yeah. to catch this one. Oh, it took like five minute shot. Yeah, almost a year for him to catch the mating habits of this one rare bird, you know, in the jungle. And he was like talking about the frustration behind it because, like, he almost had it like so many times. And then, like, you know, something would come and interrupt the shot. But man, yeah, that would be just. I just feel like it's not worth it. Yeah. Well, that's what, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, after you don't know. After. Like, you just watch it all happen within, like, you know, 10 seconds of, of the show, and you don't appreciate the fact that. And it that's took... what I was tripping out on. Like, yeah. Katrina kept making fun of me. She's like, you're watching this nature show with me, and you keep talking about the camera and right. how, like, that shot. And I'm like, well, a guy who's in, like, media, social, and we use. Well, all I this... nerd out on movies because of the same fact of how they set up all the scenes and they set up all these shots, like, the amount of detail, like, like some of these mega blockbuster movies, like they they get, uh, and, and the amount of detail on that level, it's so insane. Like we just we underappreciate it because it's just we consume it. So oh much. right, because it was yeah. a fifteen second clip, right? So yeah. for you, you consumed in fifteen seconds. You're already on to the next part of the scene. But it was like, wait a second, do you, if you dissect how long it probably took yeah. just to get that fifteen second clip, and then to get it that close, that detail, I was like, oh yeah. my god. This is crazy. I didn't even know that we had came that far. If you ever want to really, yeah, re- weed makes you appreciate that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the if, little things. It does help. If the you ever things. really want to appreciate like today's cinema, you know, cinematic uh, magic, cinematic just, adventure. Just watch a Cine- magic. Just watch a movie that you thought was awesome when you were a kid. Watch it as an adult. Oh no. Yeah. Like uh, I was showing my kid uh, what movie we were watching. Like, uh, uh, God, what was that? Never Ending Story. Oh man. And, Bastion. And my sons is like, my kids are both yeah. like. Oh, those are horrible wow, special effects. Dumb. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't look real. I'm like, shut up and watch it. Come on, man. But it's true. It's it nostalgic like, I value watched, for me. I watched Jurassic Park. Remember when it first came out? The CGI was like, whoa, that oh, looks so real. Out. Now I watch them like, all the so ripples fake. and the puddles. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you're like, what ah! do you, now, what do you guys think about this? Because I think that it's 4K and 1080 has gotten so crazy, and the new TVs have gotten mm-hmm. that it, it almost actually takes away from the movie and what i mean by that is the the it's so clear like and i remember the first time i More saw clearer this clearer than real life well what it, what it is is the pirates of the caribbean movie was the first movie is that i had real? seen this on a one of the new lcd screens and it was 4k 1080 and we were watching it on blu-ray and i remember seeing the props i could tell that they were plastic and fake and i could see the makeup lines on yeah. the men because mm-hmm. it, was it was so, so clear it was so clear yeah. And so it kind of had to change all of the actors. They've had to like add all these different 
techniques with the I bet, yeah, right? Yeah. Really? I yeah, didn't even makeup. think of that. Oh, yeah. I had to have because I was yeah. like, whoa, this is too clear. It's so clear that I don't I feel like it's fake. Mm -hmm. But when it's, you know, a little blurry, you feel like you get kind of brought you it's get It's like beer goggles for like, movies. Oh wow, look yeah. at all those blackheads. Yeah, it's you like know, it's like nose. beer it's like beer goggles. That's what I felt like the first time I had glasses. I'll never forget. Because I used to have kind of bad vision. And I remember when I was a kid and I first got glasses and I put them on and I looked at people and I'm like, wow, you guys all have bad skin. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. You know what I mean? That everybody's skin looks so smooth. Yeah, look at all those ingrown hairs. And all of a sudden, yeah. I'm like, oh, you guys have pimples Damn and it. stuff. This is weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I wonder what's going to happen with that as we, as the TV keeps evolving and getting more clear and more clear. The only thing I really enjoy, I enjoy it for sports because sports, you want to feel like you couldn't, you want it as real as possible. But there's a side of us that when we watch a movie, that's not real. Yeah, you want the magic to still right. play out. You yeah. want a little bit of the. You want a little fake when you think about it. Like you don't want it to look so real that I can tell that they're on a stage. Yeah, he's wearing a mask, right? Yeah, yeah you don't. Like, yeah. You don't. You don't want that because the, the camera's shooting so clear. So it would be interesting to talk to so, talk to somebody who is in in that world and some of the challenges that they had with this super clear. Well, yeah, it's now. like, and you see that in in directors how they how they deal with that because some will include like actual props and, and costumes and whereas others will just abandon that completely now and just use all green screen effects and like, you know, build up from that. Now here, now trip off this uh, now because the consumption from the average consumer is growing so rapidly on platforms like YouTube trip out over the, how fast YouTube is evolving with the quality of video there. Because they used to be super amateurs, and most of them still are, but little by little, you're getting them, people are getting better and spending more money on YouTube. I bet mm -hmm. you in 10 years, YouTube's going to be like fucking Hollywood, man. For you're going to sure. watch YouTube channels and be like, blow you away. Oh, you know I mean? think we're definitely going that way. When I, I was just told you guys just recently, I shared uh, when I was hanging out with my little nephew who's mm. 10, and that, and then I asked you, I asked Drew the other day too, who does a, a, a lot of our video. Well, editing. my single friends too. Like, really? Yeah. Over the, like, uh, not over the weekend, but like right before going into the weekend, I think it was like Friday night or something. I had my friends kind of come over and, um, they were like pissed because like my TV, it had everything but like YouTube and like, we didn't even, they didn't want to watch Netflix or nothing like that. They're like, dude, I, I want to show you this clip from this. Like, oh, you don't even fucking like YouTube. Like all they do is watch YouTube. Yeah. They don't watch like anything on cable anymore. No, no one watches TV. It's like, wow, the I'm younger the generation. Like nobody watches TV anymore. It's like, there's more. And I think what's neat about it, that, and this all goes back to our whole, you know, libertarian free market mentality, which is, you know, YouTube allows people anybody to create their own channel mm -hmm. and if it's good and it appeals to enough people it'll it's progressing very quickly yeah very whatever i want i just search it and boom yeah you i know, find it like, i find a guy who is just like me and giving the information that i specifically want to learn and i and he i'll tune into him and that's all i need to listen to or her or whatever the case may be so it's pretty fascinating to watch the evolution of that and then it's really neat to see people be able to monetize and actually they don't need these big production companies. You don't need all the, all this stuff, which I feel like there was a lot of politics in, right? There's well, there a, was, but yeah. part of the reason why you don't need it is the equipment's just cheaper now. Like the equipment that we use to film some of our YouTube videos, 10 years ago, a camera that we buy for $1,000. dollars like 50, 60, 50, 60 grand, 60 yeah. grand 10 years ago. Easy. That's, I mean, you know how big of a difference that is? God, it's not even crazy. 10. It's even less than that. It's yeah. been... Cameras that cameras like that were just five year five years ago or less. You couldn't it's afford it; would be impossible yeah. Yeah. to do it. No, it's super fascinating to watch the evolution of that, and it makes you want. Like, I mean, I I believe that basic TV and cable is going to be really dead. It's in the dinosaur next. already. Oh, it, it is. It's like why? I mean, news you can get faster on Twitter and Facebook. And, you know what I'm saying? If you, you know what? Else, you know what's dying right now too is news. Mainstream news is yeah. dying. Well, do you notice what quickly. they do? I was so they force it on you with like Apple. It gives I was you an update so like, ah. blown away when I caught, I don't ever watch the news and I cut the news not that long ago and I hadn't seen it in like years. And I know that like their stories, their top stories are what's trending on Twitter or Facebook. The mm. reporting on the internet. <laughs> yes, they're reporting. They're, they're reporting on that's, internet that's feeds. So up. lazy. It's like whoa, like yeah. that's so nuts. Like that, just, you're just and it's crazy because I don't know. I mean, I don't know. 
that uh, I'm sure they're being told to do that, right? I'm sure they have a boss who, mm. a producer that's going, listen, yeah. we got to talk about this because it's got a million views today yeah, and it's trending. Everybody's there. Yeah. So everyone, so this is the topic. So we got to talk about it, but they're, they're, what they're doing is they're slowly you're repeating your, you have to like, like review or talk about reporting on your competitor. You, exactly. Like who's killing you're, you're actually, yeah, the, yeah. Who, the one who's killing your business <laughs> and who's going to put you out of business. You're having to talk about that's got to be painful. You know, in yeah. that industry. So yeah. what's, what's crazy about that is, Irony. is that news is mainstream news is slowly dying. We're getting our news from social media and, and, and platforms like that. And what's happening, it's a good and bad. It's good because we can share information very quickly. Uh, everybody's a journalist as long as they have a phone, so things get reported much faster. The bad news is because of the way the algorithms work on social media, they're designed to show you what you want to see. So little by little, you are getting put in a smaller and smaller box and only presented information that confirms your bias. So if I'm into kind of conservative type stuff, whereas before, if I watched mainstream news, it was kind of, you know, I, I get a lot of everything, right? And mm -hmm. I'd have to see different points of view. And then it turned into Fox News and MSNBC and whatever, where one became liberal, one became conservative. And so people started kind of getting into more boxes. Now with social media, it's even happening even more mm -hmm. to where the algorithm will understand it and will only show you articles and stuff that are going to confirm your bias. So you never get presented information that counters your... Opinion yeah. or your that beliefs, be, that so they just dangerous. lock you in. It yeah. could be, and I don't, it's very dangerous. It's very yeah. dangerous because it's you're already seeing it where people are so like, you know, hardcore with their beliefs, and the other side is so evil they, they don't even they don't even want to listen yeah. to the other side. And so that's why I always tell everybody go seek it out and learn. Worst case scenario, you learn how to strengthen your own argument even better. Otherwise, if you rely on social media, like I notice that, like I'll flip through and it's all shit that I want to read that I, that I like to hear. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, no, no I got to find shit I don't like to hear and see what they're saying so I can at you, least it, strengthen my it argument. It takes a lot to do yeah. that. That's, it takes a lot of courage to do that is to say, hey, I, I, I like to debate this side of this or I, this is my point of view. And so I'll just continue to confirm that by diving into more information versus, okay, I know I believe this already, but let's dive into stuff that people totally disagree with this and see what they have to you say. You have to do it yourself. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, when, when I was really learning about fasting and the health benefits, all I was reading about was fasting and the health benefits. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, wait a minute, like it can't be all good. There's got to be times when it's not good, right? right. Uh, obviously. So I actually Googled uh, why fasting is unhealthy. And I would type in titles that I knew would bring up articles with differing points of view, right? And then I was able to learn uh, yeah. more, just much more broadly Most on of them the topic. Are written by like supplement companies. Anything, anything yeah. like why, like barbell squats, best exercise for your lower body. Why yeah. don't you Google why barbell squats are bad for your knees or why they're bad for your back? You may can disagree because I did. I still disagreed with them, but it strengthened my argument because some of these people actually make really compelling arguments for their points of view, and I have to go and research mm -hmm. and figure out for yeah, myself that they're either full of shit mm -hmm. or sometimes they're well, right. Well, that's a great example you just yep. gave right there is, you know, barbell squats are bad for your knees. Like, like Google that. Like I could, so I could argue that on either way. I could argue that. But I could, you should be able to. That's the point. Yeah. yeah if you're yeah. if you're reinforcing bad recruitment patterns, right. sure. Right. Yeah. But that's my point. Like yeah. you should be able to do that. Like look up the other side because you ain't going to, I ain't going to come to you naturally. I promise you all you're going to get, end up seeing is shit you want to hear, and yeah. you're gonna end up getting living in your protected bubble all the time, and all of a sudden you're you know everybody else is stupid because you're so right because I've read all this information that backs up my opinion. Yeah. Uh. Well, yeah, that's just the way that shit works. So that's the one bad thing that I can see from it. Mm. Bird, come on, bird. Bird is the word. The biased bird. Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from Scott Finding Fitness. What is everyone's opinion on herbal detoxing? So this question was kind of directed towards me because I talked about... Um, so your parasite uh, process? The parasite cleanse that I cleanse. did. Now, to be clear, this, it doesn't mean I had a parasite. 
uh, I did it because the herbs and and ingredients that are in parasite cleanses, which are have been historically shown to kill parasites, are also what are called classic antimicrobials. And after we had uh, Dr. Ruscio on the show, um, he kind of blew me away a little bit when it came to gut health. And we were having a conversation off air, and I told him that um, sometimes the best that my gut ever is is if I'm sick and I take an antibiotic. And what I do when I take an antibiotic is I also take a probiotic. So if like if I have to take amoxicillin, let's say 8 a.m. at you know 10 a.m., I'll take my probiotic because I'm trying to keep myself from getting too, you know, killing everything off too much. And what happens after two or three days of this is I have like amazing gut health, and then that lasts for like two or three weeks after I'm done with the antibiotics and then I start to slowly go back to where I was before. And I, it didn't make sense to me, you know, because I know antibiotics aren't good for you, right? They're not good mm. for your gut. They kill mm-hmm. everything. So I asked him about that and he said, well, some people, what he's finding is they need to, what he called trim the bushes. Trim the hedges. Yeah. yeah trim the hedges or trim the bushes where you just have a tendency to over, just to have overgrowth of bacteria and maybe a little bit in the small intestine and all these other things happening. And sometimes for these people, and I may be one of them, it's a good idea to kind of bring everything down a little bit um, and it feels better. And Even so, if it's beneficial bacteria, you may have overgrowth. It just bring everything kind of down a little bit. So mm. I, that's, the other, that's the main reason why I did the quote-unquote parasite cleanse. I didn't, have, I didn't think I had parasites. But nonetheless, since I've been doing it, uh, I've been feeling absolutely, I mean, blown away by how amazing I feel. And I don't mean necessarily just performance because uh, that, that is happening. I am feeling... Uh, better with performance, like stronger, more energy. But I'm also noticing less anxiety, better sleep. Uh, my mood is better. My mind is clearer. Uh, you know, better, of course, better gut health, like all these different things. And it's kind of tripping me out. So I did a little bit more research. Now, now wait, you wouldn't consider this an herbal detox, though, right? I mean, you, I was just going to say parasite cleanse is different than a herbal detox. Well, right? so I was just going to say the yeah, word a specific thing in mind. Well, the word detox is. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. It's yeah. pretty misleading because it alludes to the fact that you have to- – so you're toxic and there's right. toxins in you and you need to eliminate It toxins. reminds me of when uh, – I forget what it is, but they test like the bottom of your feet and then they say that you have like toxic like heavy metals, materials in the bottom of your feet and then they've just cleansed you of that. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there's something you soak your feet so in. So fucking it, stupid. Yeah, yeah. and it, it draws out the toxins through your feet. It's all bad science. So you can have toxins, and uh, when you do, you'll know, and you go to the doctor, and there's specific ways to remove those toxins. People have referred to fasting as detoxing. So the way they're using it doesn't necessarily mean detoxing. I think the way they're using it is like reset. I don't know. I, I mean, I like to use the word reset a little bit better, but even that is kind of... It's like you're starting over. So I don't know what the right word we would be to use. Well, I want this is where I, why I'm not a fan. Recalibrating is yeah. when you look at the studies, when you compare an herbal detox, whether it be a single day, a seven day, a fourteen day, or whatever like that, and you put it up against like a three day fast, the markers and the things that change in your body are almost identical. Mm-hmm. You get almost exactly the same benefits just from restraining from food from a long period of time that you do from following some crazy mm-hmm. herbal drink protocol. Well, that's the thing is most of these uh, like have the condition that you have to have X, Y, Z to go along with this this fast, right. which is basically you're just doing a, a fast. Yes. So like I just... As me being the skeptic, you know, immediately I'm like, well, why do you need this specific tea and all this, you know, with within the process? And you're trying to tell me that you're detoxifying mm-hmm. the environment? I don't know if I believe no, that. No doubt fasting is by itself by far the most effective thing you can do. And it's if, free. If you're trying, exactly. <laughs> hella if cheap. Yeah. If you're trying to reset, you know, <laughs> yeah. lower inflammation, uh, reset gut health, you know, um, balance you know just it's yeah. just by itself it's one of the best things you do now that being said but you need purified water that being said herbs uh are like medicines that's why they call it herbal medicine now they're not acutely as powerful as western medicine some of them are but most of them aren't they have kind of balancing you know i hate to use these terms again but they have these balancing effects so there's specific herbs that you use for specific things and they a lot of them are proven to work and uh, i would recommend going to uh, a functional medicine doctor, or a naturopath, or an herbalist to figure out what those things are for you. But that be, that all being said, 
this process that I'm going through really sparked my interest. And so I've done more research and I love looking at old cultures and especially healthy old cultures and what they've done for, you know, uh, for rituals for long periods of time. Because many of these rituals are put in these cultures because they have, you know, long-term health benefits. For example, you know, praying before you eat and, or just respecting your food. Well, you're obviously more likely to un, to not overeat and you're more likely to eat more consciously when you do that. So I can see how that's a staple in many cultures. Or walking, going for a walk after you eat. Well, studies show that that helps with digestion and it's good for you, but lots of cultures do it. Something else lots of cultures do is they do fasting and a lot of them do these their own herbal type of protocols. There's certain cultures, for example, that will go through periods of time where they eat um, these uh, these pastes made out of pumpkin seeds. I was just reading about this the other day. Mm. And the reason why they do this is uh, they do it to treat gut issues and for many times it's to treat parasites. Now, pumpkin seeds, stati- this is a fact, you can look this up, there's an ingredient or there's a compound in pumpkin seeds that actually paralyzes certain parasites like tapeworms. And so when tapeworms latch on to your to your gut lining or to your your intestines and you you know you pass your 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 poop or whatever they latch on and they stick around they don't leave well when you paralyze them with pumpkin seeds they get paralyzed they let go and then you poop them out and so this is why some cultures will do this wormwood is another one um and so it's really fascinating to see how all these cultures have implemented some of these you know quote unquote herbal detoxes or methods of eating, uh, you know, throughout the season to rid their body of, you know, what they would call toxins, but it's probably from parasites or bacterial overgrowth and all those things. Cause you got to imagine like humans were probably absolutely riddled with parasites. Yeah. Uh, throughout just from evolution. water alone. I mean, yeah. you just are right. And they're kind of symbiotic. They live, uh, with our bodies and just like bacteria, and but humans did certain things to kind of like dogs will do. So you ever notice like dog when they're feeling sick, they'll go eat grass and do yeah. certain things. I'm forcing the puke. Yeah, and uh, you know, so humans have done this for a long time as well. So my opinion on herbal detoxing is, if it's for a specific reason and you've gone and seen a professional, um, they can be pretty. They can be pretty effective, and herbs can be a very effective treatments for chronic disease alongside in a very, very, by the way, a very good herbalist or or naturopath is unlikely to just give you herbs there. It's never just a, like a Western medicine protocol where they're like, okay, take this three times a day and then you're fine. What they'll typically do is they'll say, don't eat this, don't eat that, eat this, move this way. Oh, and take you know, these herbs. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of that holistic approach. So, well, that's why I used to, I used to tell people that like when most of these herbal detoxing things, they come with like a whole, like seri- protocol. yeah protocol and it's like when you really dive into the protocol and you look at the the fasting and the routine the workout routine and the amount of water they're having like that's where the real benefits coming from is the restriction of all the fucking extra calories the mm. movement they're asking you to do and the extra fluid that you probably weren't consuming before like that right there is the big bang for your buck mm-hmm. now even though i'm knocking it this is something that I don't think is going to hurt a lot of people. And if you have the money to throw away and it's not a big deal, like, and you're like, okay, I just would rather follow something or I feel like, you know, if I'm opening a box and making a tea every, you know, three hours that this makes me feel like I could all be consistent with it, then I guess by all means, mm-hmm. right. It's not, I think we could all agree like an herbal tea detox, an herbal detox tea well, thing is not you, going to hurt you. And I'm, I keep saying yeah. like, go see someone who knows what they're doing with this stuff. Cause if you go and search it online, you're going to find a bunch of, Baloney, but I mean, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you an example. You know, if you have elevated liver enzymes, for example, by the way, before, if you don't, don't take my advice because I'm not an herbalist. I'm just talking about, I'm reporting on what I've actually read and seen. In some countries, in some Western, uh, developed Western nations like, um, like Germany, for example, Germany has a, a division of their healthcare, and I don't even know if they still have it, but they did, where they would study herbs and plants, and that was a first line of recommendation. So if a patient came in with certain problems, if it wasn't too bad, then the doctor would recommend diet and herbal protocol. But like, if, for example, if you had like elevated liver enzymes, they would recommend certain dietary changes, and if that didn't help enough, then they would recommend something like milk thistle, which milk thistle's got liver detoxifying properties, and this is confirmed by uh, lots of study. 
uh, prostate enlargement. Um, if you have issues with your prostate, you could go to your doctor and take, you know, finasteride, which blocks the conversion of testosterone to DHT, which has its own side effects and can be effective, but can cause lots of problems. Or you can take something like Saul Palmetto, which has been shown in minor cases to uh, reduce the inflammation of the prostate. And in, in doing so, uh, with that, with minimal or no side effects. I mean, that's what I really like about plants is when you take a plant, you tend to you have an active ingredient, but you have all these other things in the plant that mm-hmm. tend to keep it balanced, so you don't get this extreme effect. You know, right. many times, not always, but many times. So. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.FM for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audiobook if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnaturedblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. Next up is Eddie OFA. What did you fear most about being a trainer when you started? That's a tough question. What did you fear? You know, I I was hmm. I think I was most scared about training a like doctor or a physician or hmm. a PT. I was I, can see that. I yeah. was nervous about training someone who I felt understood and knew the body better than me. Hmm. Uh, that was always. But I also think that same fear is also what made me a better trainer because I would go into those. I was super nervous about those training sessions. So I would go into that session very prepared, like, okay, I'm going to make sure I put together a really good program. I'm going to make sure that I can explain myself very well, like why I have them doing this and why I have them eating this way. So as much as it was a fear, I also in, embraced that. And, and I know that that was a big uh, factor in me evolving as a trainer. But I, I would think that has to be one of the most nerve-wracking things that I remember experiencing as a as an early trainer when I first started was oh shit I've got you know I'm 22 years old I just really started learning all this stuff I'm barely getting confident in building my programming myself and nutrition and here I've got this you know 45 50 something year old PhD that I have to train tomorrow and I'm like oh fuck this yeah. is very scary. Did you ever have one that like it's intimidating questioned you or countered you while you were training them? Oh yeah no definitely I mean I, I had many a times when early early years that I got straightened out by saying saying some bullshit that wasn't right you know <laughs> and, and getting I, I wish I I could give you a, a, an exact story. I don't, but I know that. I know for sure there was times. But once again, I, I think that's what. Uh, Where you like make up a, a, a word on accident? You know oh, I mean? well, you know me. I've been the make- anterior rotation of the you know interior or whatever, and they're like, "What are you talking about? That's yeah. not what it well, was called." I think it only happened maybe once or twice, and I, I learned my lesson to to not do that anymore. And I was better off. And this is where, and I think I talked about this on an episode a long time ago that when I started to get these really brilliant minds, instead of me going into it and like trying really hard and trying to sound smarter and, and do all this shit, I was like, you know what? Well, why am I going to try and pretend like I know more than this motherfucker I'm about to help right now? He hired me. He needs my help somewhere. I'm going to spend more time asking him questions like, yeah. what can I do for you? What what were you, what were you, what are you looking for from me? And then asking him stuff about about the body myself too. Instead of trying to sound smarter than what I really was, I spent more time asking this brilliant mind in front of me questions that I wanted to know that he probably knew. And then I would just directly ask him, "Hey, what is it I could do for you, or what do you want from me, you know, to help you?" And mm. so I think once I switched those gears, instead of trying to sound a certain way, I, I did a lot better with it. I can identify with that a little bit too. Uh, just not the what what you don't know. You know, and like, so if somebody like brings something up and, you know, you don't really have that much of a clue. I know one specific example for me was, I mean, I I didn't do a lot of machine based training, uh, you know, going through my sports career and like uh, training with the team. Like I was very versed with barbell training and plyometrics and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and then I got into like more of the gym environment, the commercial gym environment. And then, 
you know, machines were the thing. And so people kind of expected like these certain machines. And I remember one time I, I took this poor lady over to this machine because she really wanted to try it out. And I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And I had her like facing the wrong way. Oh, no. and, like some guy came up and he's like, bro. And like he was a total bro. And he was like, like teaching her. Like right in front of me, like punking me. Oh no! Oh my god! I got so insecure after that. Like that. Do you like, remember stuck the, with me? Do you remember the machine? What it was? <sighs> I don't. I don't really remember. It was like um, a preacher curl. It, it, no, in my <laughs> preacher curl. <laughs> like said, no, no, no. It just got them all backwards on a no. Fucking- <laughs> God, what was it? It was like a hack squat um, kind of machine, that, and I had her facing like the you other way. Just bullshit oh, and be like, yeah. I, I, you know, you're right. That's the way to do it. But I like to do it this way because I know I like, like <laughs> now I would do that. I'm saying back then I was so insecure already. You know, like trying to like provide the best service and like I knew everything. Like I stuck in my wheelhouse. Yeah, you right. know what I mean? And and so once I started to kind of like broaden. Uh, you know, my workouts and now and- you know it's funny that that didn't fly back then, but nowadays. People do shit all the time. The that's stupid weird. shit that I see in the gym now, I'm like, Jesus. Like, oh, they're being creative. Oh, totally. You know? yeah. Oh, totally. Now like, it's like, like I got, I got schooled. Oh, look, they're using the hip, the leg extension for hip thrust. Well, I, j- you know, this, yeah. you know what? I'm glad this came up because we should address this. I saw this on the forum. Did you see this thread on the forum? This is actually a really popular thread. Somebody, somebody posted, uh, somebody doing the the leg push downs on the, the oh the dip machine the the yes, weight assist the dip and machine. the gravitron. Oh, fuck off. And well, I have a couple things I want to say. One, um, I don't like when we're you know punking somebody uh, that's that's doing some of like that. Like I don't I don't want to make fun of a particular person. E- exactly, a Not, particular yeah. person where I where I would take a photo of them and single them out for doing a stupid exercise like that. But I do like to address how stupid an exercise like that is. So they get educated. Exactly. So I, I, what I was not a fan of was the thread, a picture of somebody doing it, and then it turned into this, like, you know, half the people are defending the person. It's like, you know, oh, don't make fun of them for doing that. The other half of the people are like, no, that's really stupid. So I, w- I want to just put that out there that, one, I'm not a fan of us ever, you know, pointing something out like that on at a single person or making fun of them because for all you know they got it from somebody who they they think is really smart or is really uh reputable in the fitness industry and told them to do that they don't know any better and they don't know any yeah. better right so i'm more i'm more going after the people that the influencer have, people yes that if are you're an influ- yeah. influencer and you're teaching a move like that it's ridiculous uh and the i the irony of it is most girls are doing it to build a butt Mm-hmm. And if you look, if you understand biomechanics, the the exercise is way more hip flexor and quad dominant yeah. than it is even glute dominant. So to do it to isolate the glutes is already a silly a silly move. It's it's more. There's about a million exercises that are more effective. Yes, than using a machine that that's not even what it's designed for. Yeah, exactly. For. You're preoccupying somebody else's like <laughs> use by doing. Why dumb why shit. don't you just step up on something? Like, uh-huh. why push a platform down that's designed to support your weight when you do pull-ups and dips? Why don't you just step up on something? And it would be far more right. beneficial to do that. Way mm-hmm. more beneficial. A step up way will more. have way more carryover for the glutes, way more functional carryover, burn more calories, build more muscle. So if, you, if you're out there and you're doing that silly move, yeah. stop doing it. It is not that benefit. You're wasting your time. If you're doing that for 10, 15 minutes, you could be spending 10 to 15 minutes doing a ton of other movements that would be far more beneficial Way for, more. For, than the booty. So Way more effective. I, that, you know, the original question about fear. So, you know, it's funny. Maybe because I was so young. Because I was 18 when I first became a personal trainer. And I was so passionate about uh, working out, especially in gyms. I was in gyms since I was maybe 15 that I, you know, I, I had zero fear of the entire process to the point where even before I got certified, I got clients um, to wait for me to get certified. So I'd sign them up and I told them I'll be certified in, you know, in two weeks and then they waited for me. So the whole process, I had no fear, but I do remember one particular moment that was uh, probably the first time I fucked up with a client, and I, it's because I got cocky. Like I was, like I said, I, I went in, I was super confident, loved it, so I had zero, absolutely zero anxiety and fear over it. And I trained people, and I got real successful real quick. Probably my second month uh, as a trainer, there was one lady I'll never forget. Her name was Wendy. If you're listening, Wendy. 
uh, I'm hope sorry. you're doing well. Yeah, you have a great uh, burger. <laughs> so I trained her, and she was a school teacher. <laughs> That's what came to mind when Wendy came out? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Wendy's. Mm. <laughs> I'm hungry right now. <laughs> so, you know what that just reminded Frosties. me of? Frosties. Is yeah. when, when you get directions from somebody, and they give you like fast food markers. Like, yeah. okay, go down, and you'll turn, see- Turn McDo- left the Carl's Jr. Yeah, McDonald's <laughs> is going to be on your right, and yeah. then you go a little bit further from there, and then you'll see KFC on the left, and then you're going to circle back around, flip a U-turn- Right over by Taco Bell, and it's like yeah. Damn, well, under the <laughs> overpass. Yeah. Well, so she, so this wasn't the Wendy, uh, but she was a client of mine, Wendy, and I got cocky, and so I'd have her come in and w- warm up for like five to ten minutes on cardio, and then I'd go grab her, and then we'd go work out. Well, I was cocky, right? I'm like the top trainer in the gym already, fucking doing all whatever, Good and I looking. lost track of time. <laughs> I lost track of time, so she was on there for like 15 minutes warming up. So she walks, she gets off the cardio and I'm bullshitting with another trainer. She walks over to me and she gives me this dirty look and I'm like, and I walk over to her and she goes, I'm not paying you to hang around so I could do cardio. And she walks into the weight area. So I walk after her to train her and it was like, holy fuck, like I totally fucked up. And I remember from that moment on, I was very, very... Like I paid very close attention to my client's time and I really respected them. But it, because I was new and I was a kid and I got cocky and then she, she checked me so hard. Yeah. Like I felt like the biggest idiot. Like I felt like an asshole. Like mm. what am I doing? Why did I leave her out there? That was a huge learning experience for me. Uh, that, that was yeah. a major... That's pe- good. She checked you. Yeah, like, right. No, yeah, that was good. Most that people would, just be off. You know, like, they, talk they, shit about Or they don't say anything. They just don't re-sign with you. Yeah, right, yeah. Or something like that. That sure. was a major pet peeve of mine with trainers. Like I was like, absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely not. Are you allowed to stand next to your client where they fucking do 10 to 15 minutes of warming up? That's like, you don't need lazy. To, they do, fuck. Yeah, they do not need to be paying you for 15 minutes of elliptical, <laughs> you know. And some of them would push that, you know, 20, 30 minutes of elliptical. I'm just like, <laughs> and then have them run laps in the yeah, gym, you yes. know, in between sets. Well, I think I, to, I think I shared that story with you guys when I was running boot camps. I had a boot camp, oh, yeah, I had right. trainers working for me. And I remember, you know, I dropped in one time, you know, I'd cruise in every once in a while, drop in on my camps, obviously, to see how my trainers are running camps. And one of the trainers that was running one of these camps that I had built up. Uh, I showed up and he's like standing out there on the basketball court by himself. And I'm like, where the fuck are all our clients? He's like, oh, they're on a run. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean they're on a run? I'm checking my face. He's like, oh, I, I sent him to, and he tells me with a marker. And I'm like, that's like fucking three miles, dude, out there. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you sent him on a six mile run before, like, they're not going to be back for you guys 40 go minutes. on a journey. So, and you just chill. Come back, we'll do yeah, like, you, I don't know, you, five push ups. You chill over here while they go run for 45 minutes and you get, what, 15 minutes of stretching at the end and then they're yeah. done with their. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, never again are you allowed to do Today's that. Today's workout, go run. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go here and then come back. Like, that was right. so bad. I was get like, lost. Some trainers, man, I tell you what. It's just like anything else, though, right? You get comfortable in a job, you start cutting corners and stuff. So, I guess. Journey to Jacked. Is it possible to listen to music and listen to your body in the gym? I heard people say it destroys the connection with your body, and I have never heard you guys discuss this. This in is funny. This is actually this is funny. A very good is that a question. Real question? It, it, no, is, it is. No, it's a good question, and it's but it's funny to think that somebody would think that it would destroy a connection. Well, think about it this way: there are are there different types hmm. of music that you listen to that you guys listen to depending on the type of exercise and activity well yeah i'll change it around based off of, of course like, if i need to really get that cns like charged up. exactly like yeah. if you're gonna lift super heavy and go nuts you're probably gonna listen to like more Some like heavy, heavy metal yeah. and something like right if you're gonna go do stretching or warming up yeah, or hiking or restorative or, and chill you, you might listen to more chill stuff so this is actually a very very good question and i could see how because i've I done this feel before. like that's a no-brainer though Dude, let me tell you guys a story so when I when I had my my gym that I owned, I would work out and it was great because I'd work out there on my own and some in the middle of the day sometimes there would be no clients, so I'd turn the lights off and I'd do these crazy workouts. Well, at this particular point, I think I might have been training for a jujitsu tournament. So I was doing like these interval type training. So I'd lift heavy and then I'd do these intervals and I kind of designed this this program to get me ready for this tournament. Well, I was playing the soundtrack to Rocky Four. Course. Which, uh, <laughs> of course. I mean, we literally could have yeah. uh, said that. Yeah, you should have yeah. asked us. Yeah, to yeah, guess. Exactly. Which one do you and think? And so, Rocky Four. Th- so this is why this is funny. So I put Rocky Four on, and whenever I had the Rocky Four soundtrack, especially the montage music, hell yeah, I like, 
I just I, I can picture myself like I'm fighting the Russian, right? So I'm like <laughs> yeah. going crazy, and I hurt myself. And the reason why this is funny is because that is the third time I hurt myself listening to the Rocky <laughs> soundtrack because- it Amps you up way too much. It, because it, it literally- Puts it, you in that and moment. I, and of, I didn't, the way I explained it before was the music got me so pumped that I pushed myself too hard. But now that I'm reading the question, what it really did was it made me ignore my body. I didn't, I disconnected from my mm, body because I'm so fucking driven uh, by this music that I'm I so see. connected to okay. that I pushed past- Mm. Where I should have, and I hurt myself. That's done that. Now that you mention that, like, there's times I have done that where I'm like <laughs> exactly. getting really into like like a song that's just driving me to to fucking press more weight and and yeah, I've, I've hurt my shoulder before too. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, uh, man, being in the gym, music playing in my ear, like. This is why, too, I remember when I first started using the big headphones and people were making oh, fun the of over me. Oh, yeah. the over-ear? People were Such making, a big difference. Yeah, yeah, I remember doing that early on. A bunch and, of DJs in the gym now. And yeah. everybody was making fun of me to do, and do for doing that. And I was like, if and Katrina still trips out to this day because she's like, you didn't see that hot girl or you didn't see that. I'm like, when I'm in the gym, like I am, that's like church for me, man. And I am in such a flow state and music is a very big part of that for me. I can just, the, the big headphones drowns out any noise around me. So I don't hear the clanging of weights. I don't hear people laughing and joking about their weekend and stuff. I literally see what's in front of me and what I'm focusing on currently. And I hear this, this tune in my, in my head. And it's just, it helps me dive so deep into being connected with my body. It is the furthest thing from being distracted. And if if anything, like I've been heard or had issues from not having music and hearing other people talking or looking at something and being distracted from all the other things that are going around in the gym and actually tuning out everything but the music, the melody in my in, in my ears is so much easier for me to actually stay connected and stay focused. So, but you're you're pretty careful with what music you pick, depending on what you're gonna do or what kind of tempo or pace. right? Yes and no. Yeah. I think there's pretty much two. Well, let me ask you this: two like, major. You know, it'd be cool. Major. Like in my one of my clients actually suggested this. Like, and I've people have asked us before, like what our playlists are and all that. We could easily put together like a Spotify collective kind of list for these like for your you know your heavier like more intensified days and then your yeah. restorative days and like mobility your priming part like mm -hmm. i bet you we could come up with some cool uh you know soundtrack so what i like to do when i if when i'm priming or you know warming up stretching whatever is i like to listen to brain fm focus no brainer brain yep. fm focus for yeah. that part of my workout mm -hmm. is amazing and it does make me connect more I don't like listening to it as much as I like listening to heavy shit when I'm lifting heavy. And it's funny because I'll even wait for the right moment of a song to start a set. Like I'll get under the bar and I'm waiting for freaking Rage Against the Machine. I'm waiting for that shit to hit the right moment. And then I unrack and I go yeah. uh, and lift that weight. Or there's certain types of hip hop that I'll listen to mm -hmm. uh, like Tupac when I want to do more of a slow paced resistance training type workout where I'm doing my sets and I'm pacing myself and I'm trying to get like a good pump or whatever, hmm. then I'll listen to that. So it's funny when we, when you first read this question, Justin, I was like, that's a silly question. Yeah, I thought about it. I'm like, no, wait, wait a minute. That's yeah, a brilliant question. No, no, I know. It, it seems silly at first. I think brain FM to me is for the, the priming brain FM for priming or yoga and yeah. meditate. Cause it has a great meditation uh, section too. So those two I think are, for that or if i'm lifting heavy like you said I, I can listen to almost anything that will amp me up so heavy metal even like if i'm in a like cruising through my workout i can listen to hip-hop what what's well, music or running i have a totally different playlist oh obviously. true yeah definitely what music or song are you most likely to hurt yourself over like what uh, what song you, like is the like you'll listen to and be like okay i'm gonna go break some shit now like yeah. do you like i know yeah, you guys yesterday have don't mean shit by uh pantera yeah Oh, that man. one's fucking that one great. Fucking gets me going. Probably killing in the name of for Rage Against the Machine. A good one too. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. What's the song? Uh, God, I can't, I can't believe I can't remember the name of it. It's the Rage Against the Machine song that was at the end of the Matrix. 
mm-hmm. when Neo flies off and it's dun 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 dun. Bullet dun. in your head. Bullet. Is no. Wait. No, it's not bullet in your head. It's the Godzilla one, then, right? Is it? Is it Freedom? No. Uh, no. That, those, oh, no. Those I, are I all, love Freedom. That's like Those my are all so all good, but uh, I can't remember it. I'll have to come back to it. Yeah. Next question, Derek. Bulls on Parade? Uh, those are all good, but yeah, there's, no. that one song, that one. <laughs> there's that one song that makes me lose my shit. But the answer to the question is that, you know, it, it can destroy your connection. It really is to each their own, right? I really feel like... Everybody is uniquely different. I know some people that I yeah, remember, people get charged up by different. Yeah, and I, and different I think if you melodies. feel like wake up, wake up, uh, wake up, uh, wake up. Uh, that uh, one right there, I reserve for special occasions. Yes, yeah. I feel like I feel like if it works for you, then absolutely do it. If you feel like the music is distracting you, then either one, probably change the music you're listening to, or two, like get rid of the music. So I think everyone's different. SP Frem, if you did have to lose weight fast. How would you do it? Uh, nice little trick question there. Can we put uh, a dis- so, disclaimer? Yes. Right? So here's a little disclaimer. Uh, I'm going to explain what I would do if I had to lose weight fast. Don't do this because <laughs> it's not an effective long-term strategy. And uh, I, would yeah. ne- I wouldn't recommend anybody do this. But the question is, if I had to lose weight very fast, how would I do it? Well, I w- step one, because I'm trying to lose weight on the scale, I'd go low calorie and I'd go... Very, 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 very low carbohydrate, uh, like no carbohydrate. My protein intake would be pretty high. My fat intake would be moderate. So it wouldn't even be keto because my fat wouldn't be super high. I wouldn't feel very good, but I'd lose lots of weight, lots of water weight uh, as well very, very quickly. So in a week, in a week's period of time, I would see the scale go down uh, quickly. The second thing I would do is I would do cardio um, several times a day. So I do cardio in the morning. I'm already grossed out because somebody's like writing this down right now. I know. Now. You know what I mean? And that's what I would do. It's like, ugh. It, and it would work very, very quickly within a two-week period. I would also rebound very quickly after stopping that. Yeah. And I'd probably damage my metabolic uh, system a little bit as well. Justin, what would you do? Well, I mean, I I would start by like abusing the whole fasting <laughs> part of it. <laughs> I right? fast for a week. Yeah, fast for like a couple of days, and and then like right out of that, I would start charging. Obviously, low carbohydrate and just like Sal's kind of describing, but um, you know, like it, for me, it's high intensity cardio that really like triggers that response to to start shedding the weight. So. You know, for me, that was my go-to. If I was like, I gotta get, I gotta lose weight, like you know, really fast. I, you know, that was kind of like a go-to. And then we got a lot smarter. I, uh, for me, this is actually a really easy question because getting ready for a show requires that I have this ability to turn turn up a notch or be able to like get my body ready at a specific time. You know, so. I would be very mathematical about this and we'll use current numbers and where I'm at right now and how I would do it differently from what I'm doing right now. So right now, if you're watching my Instagram and my Insta story, you can watch the slow, correct process to doing this. But if I knew like, okay, I have to do it as fast as I can, as fast as I can would change based off of what you told me. So if you said, Adam, as fast as you can for two weeks, as fast as you can for four weeks, as fast as you can for six weeks, the answer would be different for each of those. And this is why. If you were to take an approach that was six weeks long and you said as fast as you possibly could, and I was right out the gates, restricted to 1,500 calories and did cardio twice a day, that would be great for the first week or two and I'd see some great change. But then the last four weeks, my body would slow up like crazy and I'd see very, very small change. So I would break down off of how many weeks uh, that I have to be ready by in or, uh, off of that. So an example of where I'm at right now, 3,500 calories to 3,800 is about my maintenance right now. So what I would do if this was like two to four weeks, each day I would slightly restrict. So I'd probably take away about 200 calories. I would slightly increase my volume in the training room. So I would probably add a couple sets to all my, a set to every exercise or a couple sets in the total uh, amount of exercises in that workout. And I would slowly increase either steps or cardio every single day. So just a little bit. So uh, let's say day one is whatever it is, what it is. Then day two, I come in, I do 10 more minutes of cardio. I do 
100 less calories that day, I do two more sets of exercises. And each day I add on that just a little bit all the way up into whatever my day is that I'm trying to be ready for that way. And I make sure that I leave room for that. Like, so if it's over the course of six weeks, I need to know that, okay. Yeah, you're not going to end up with five hours of cardio. Or e- like exactly. Yeah. And I'm not going to end up at zero calories, right? So I can't, I don't want to go from a guy who eats 4,000. smarter than the way I was going to do it. 4,000. 4, <laughs> well, I, so. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just beat the shit out of myself, you know. This is a very. Do all, everything it takes. Very realistic thing for me to have to be able to do when you're getting ready for state. This is what I loved about competing was this, this was being able to be strategic about, okay, Adam, you have to get on stage in 10 weeks and you're currently 15% body fat. Yeah. What does that look like? And so, and, and this is kind of like what I think is wrong with a lot of the competitors out there is they hire these coaches and these coaches just like restrict them on calories and blast them on cardio and blast them on high volume training right out the gates all the way till then. And they do get in good shape, but what ends up happening is they plateau way earlier than they should because they came, they threw everything at the, in the kitchen sink at their body right out the gates. And that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is just you want to slowly add volume. You want to slowly restrict calories. You want to slowly add cardio time. And that way, each time your body is having to adapt to a new amount of volume, a new amount of cardio. And then you won't plateau. You'll just see a little bit of change every single day all mm-hmm. the way till then. So, yeah, I mean, and, you know, that all being said, we re- I mean, Doing it slowly is effective, more effective for your body on a physiological level, but it's also more effective uh, mentally. And you're less likely to stick to something that is a dramatic, drastic change than you are to something that is a small, subtle change. Well, I didn't see any of that in the question. So you guys, you know, it was just like, yeah. how would you lose weight quickly? I mean, if, if we're going to put any thing. kind of rationale behind it, it would be a totally different answer. Yeah, I just you know want to I mean? say what I'm saying because yeah. I want to make sure. Because what's going no, to it's good. Here's point what's that going to happen. Yeah. Doug's going to title this. It's going to say lose weight fast. People are going to click on it to learn how to lose weight yep. as fast as possible. And so now we have to redirect. Their we want to give them the, the right information. Yeah. And doing anything, trying to do anything crash course is the worst long-term strategy of, of all time. You yep. will simply, you will not do well long-term. And in fact, you may actually cause yourself more harm to where when you gain the weight back, it becomes even harder to lose it the second or third time or whatever. Yeah, if you're watching the process that I'm going through right now, you will see me do this in a very healthy, balanced way. And that is the goal, is for me to reduce body fat as fast as I possibly can, but in a smart, strategic way that's sustainable so that when I get there... I can hold that air, that that weight or weight that body fat percentage for as long as I, I as I want to, versus you know can I get you know in faster shape in two weeks than I did uh, going the other way. So I think that the big mistake that a lot of people make, and I like I said, I see this in competing all the time, is this all at once. That is not a smart strategy. The body is just an it just doesn't work very well. It's very, very smart, and it figures out yeah. what you're trying to do to it really you get quick. get a really small window. And it gets very efficient really quick, and this is where most people just say, fuck it, because they go like, man, yeah. I am pounding my way at like, myself. You'll see great results, you know, right out of the gates with this, like, high-intensity mentality, but, yeah, you just, it'll burn mm-hmm. out, and your body will adapt to that, and now you're, like, you're in a whole new set of problems. Mm-hmm. Yep. Excellent. 30 days of coaching is available for free at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, on YouTube, Mind Pump TV, we post a new video every single day um, on exercise demos, correctional movements. There's some comedy stuff on there. There's already tons of videos. So you just go to YouTube and just search Mind Pump TV. Also, if you want us to answer one of your questions on these episodes, you got to ask the question on our Instagram page at Mind Pump Media. We also have personal pages. Mine's Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. 
The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.